All right, we are back here at the Journey to Better studio. Again, Mike Carbray, Director of Instruction at Butterfield Country Club, Golf Digest Best in the State of Illinois, GRAA Top 50, Illinois PGA Teacher of the Year. Excited to be here, Mike, thank you for having us. It's Thanks been a pleasure coming. to be here going over yeah. some stuff with how people can practice better, use their simulators better. So again, it's been hopefully helpful for everybody at home. And uh, today we got some more information about some curves. All right, yeah. Okay. I mean, the best thing, you know, you spend this money on these great tools and, mm -hmm. and how do you use them? What's the best way to exactly. get better quicker? Yep. And, and so one of the ways people struggle is how do you create certain curves mm -hmm. or, or shot shapes or things like that? Mm -hmm. so, um, so we can, you know, face and path. I think everyone is pretty comfortable understanding the relationship between face and path. Right. Would you agree? Yeah, I know, I know we've talked about it on the channel before, but yeah, I think because of technology like this becoming more accessible, I think people start realizing like, hey, if you're closed to the path, you're gonna get a draw. And if you're open to the path, you're gonna more likely get a fade, right? Yeah. Assuming you hit it good. But right. So yeah, yeah, but I think what people struggle with when they try to do this is, all right, how do I practice in a way that one helps me learn it and just kind of get comfortable with it, maybe develop like, hey, this is what my shot shape is. Or, and then two, like what are some things they can do to take it out to the course and say, all right, hey, I'm going to actually try to do this sure. as far as a curve. Yeah, well, I mean, most people have a predominant mm -hmm. path or shot shape, mm -hmm. all right? I think the thing that varies a lot is their face. Yeah. Um, as you know, the higher handicapper you get, the more variability in your face, but most people will have a, either an in to out path or an out to in, you know, that stays pretty constant in their game. Right. Um, so what you want to do is like, you know, Tiger Woods is, is well known for hitting the nine shots. Mm -hmm. And part of his practice routine was, could he hit every shot, you know, low draw, medium draw, high draw, straight, 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 mm -hmm. and fades. And so that was what he did to warm up. So he had control over his golf ball and his swing and knowing what to do, how to hit those shots. Yeah, and I think, you know, you, you've probably heard this too. I hear a lot of people, I mean, number one request I get by far is, hey, I just wanna hit it straight. And I think everybody comes in and then they're like, okay, so if we say club path, club face, all right, uh, if you zero those out, those would, that would be a dead straight shot if you hit it good. And they're like, yeah, why don't I just do that? And it's like, well, join the club if right. you could do that. But I don't think people realize is, how pros, like you said, they're really kind of balancing everything out. You know, sure. they're maybe they're working with a left path, they're working to a right path, and that's what helps create that ability to then kind of get zeroed out, right. if you want to call it that. Yeah, and I, I think that that's probably the hardest shot to hit is that straight one. Mm -hmm. I think most pros have some minimal mm -hmm. curve to their shot or what they like to see. Right. And, and you know, when you watch Golf Channel or something like that, and everyone's got their track man or quad out. Um, your body is different every day. Right. So you feel like you're making the same motion and you know like when you hit it well, your path may be you know, four into out, but you're making that same swing and all of a sudden today it's eight into out. Right. So you're gonna have to, you know, Rory McIlroy is like, okay, today I need to feel like I'm coming over the top, hitting a cut right. to get back to his normal, normal spot. So. Okay, so if people are coming in, so let's say I wanna go through and let's get started with the nine shots. Would you recommend, like if I'm coming up here, should I be trying, let's say I wanna just get some hooks going, so should I maybe try to get the path way out or should I explore the path a little bit or yeah, you so kinda just let it happen? I, I, I let it happen. I say hit a couple shots, let's okay. see who you are okay. and, and go from there. So we'll try hitting one. Okay. 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 So path, little face closed, path uh -huh. a little across. So, you know, one first thing I would say is, you know, if you were my student, I'd say, well, you know, what sh shot shape do you normally hit? Usually hit a draw, but I struggle with a pull okay. like that. Okay. So, um, so once you find that out, then we have something to work on, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I'm not going to have you come in here and, you know, try and draw the ball more if your bad shot is already going to the left. Okay. You know, so I would say, why don't we try and, you know, hit some cuts. What would you do if you needed to hit a cut 
to make the ball go more to the right. Okay, so to do that, I'd have to swing more left. More left, and what do we have to do with the face? Keep it open. Keep it more open than you had, right? Okay. So let's try and hit some like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna take it, go that way. Definitely cutting, I think. Yeah, perfect. And so that zeroed out my face already. Right. Okay, so we picked a number and then we right. did that. Okay. okay, so I would do that a few times, yeah. obviously, and go from there. And then I would say, okay, that was a that was a nice cut. Let's see if you get, you know, and it, we're using an eight iron, so uh -huh. curves are a little bit harder as you add loft. Uh -huh. um, so probably a good club to practice with this would be six iron. Okay, yeah. You know, something like that, so we can see a little bit more movement. Mm -hmm. But um, I would say, okay, you really hit a big cut for me. Let's see. Okay. And let's just look at that, you know, that carry distance. Might want to hit one a little better than that one. All right, so that was a cut, good. And you know, you can see how when we hit shots like this, the the carry distance is not very good. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're struggling with distance, distance is one of the things you you feel like you need to get better. Um, practicing some draws or some hooks, yeah, so gonna just help to that. Show that. So hit one of those for me. That was a better one. You can see it just goes way yeah. farther. Way, way better. So right. right off the bat, even though on a good one there, you can see my, I struggle with that club face. Right. So if I'm gonna get, if I'm struggling with getting that thing closed, which is gonna make my shape go left and keep going left because I'm drawing it, I need to work on going opposite. I need to work on hitting cuts where the face is more open. And then right. I can always bounce back be to the draw, you know, like we just said, hey, hit a draw. I can hit a draw because that's what I'm used to. Right. But, you know, you got to balance yourself out and try to program yourself to right. say, hey, let's get that club face yeah. going the other way. And, and, and a lot of it is just a, an awareness or understanding of what open and closed is and what in and out is. And mm -hmm. so the more you can hit shots and create shots, the better feel you're going to have and you're going to know how to adjust you know, because the beauty of golf is hitting that shot and knowing how to correct it on the next one. Right. Because, you, you know, you never want to keep hitting the same shot over and over again if it's putting you in trouble. So what, being able to figure out well, what do I need to change to get that ball to go closer to the target. And the only way you're going to figure that out is to do what you kind of alluded to at the start, which is, you know, you have to get in here. And, you know, I think, again, a lot of people are worried about, you know, not saying it's not important, but position here, 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 but they're not thinking about at all what that does to the number, right? right? To the club pad, which that's what, may, that, that's what matters, right? Like that's what's gonna make the ball go where it goes where it goes. Right. So, you know, you can work on your technique, obviously that all helps, but make sure you pay attention and start understanding, as you saw there, I had to go more out, okay? And feel like I'm coming in to make that club face wanna stay more open, right. feel that cut path. And then also what I learned, because I do tend to strike it on the toe and I hit some of those shots on the toe, I learned, hey, if I'm hitting it on the toe, I probably need to swing more out at it, right? right? Like you get other feels that go with it that you can just start building on. And I think that's really important as you're trying to go in through all of this stuff with these yeah, technologies. Absolutely. Okay. And, and you know, so I think in practice mode, this is great, mm -hmm. but I think in play mode, you want to have one shot shape okay. that you kind of stick to. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the guy that's going to hit a, a draw on the first hole and then a fade on the second hole. Yeah. There's too much going on to, right. to kind of get that. So I would say, okay, know how to hit these shots, but when you're playing golf and you're a drawer of the golf ball, just hit, hit draws. Yeah. Hit draws 99% of the time and you're gonna be better off, your scores are gonna be lower. Okay. You know, but as for practicing, you're overdrawn, we gotta get that face a little bit more open right. for you. There's and a difference between practice and play. Absolutely. Is what you're saying. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. So let's say, all right, somebody like me, okay, they're like, hey, I wanna hit a push draw, right? That's something people always talk about, is hit a push draw. But you see somebody like me that's kind of struggling with that, but I'm, I'm getting it to draw, Right. but you know, all right, hey, it's, it's left, that's not pushing, it's more of a pull draw. So if I'm going out on the course, you know, and we're not gonna work on it, what would be kind of some of the things that, you know, for somebody that's maybe struggling to master their curve, some of the things that I think people can do to cheat it out on the course a little bit? 
Yeah, so, I mean, the big thing for you is, is the face. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can, when you're playing, get that face more open out of dress. Mm -hmm. And so, simple thing of just pushing the handle a little bit more forward okay. is going to angle that face a little bit more to the right. Okay. So that would be one way I would potentially do it. Uh -huh. um, your grip, you know, take a look at your grip. If your grip is too strong, um, maybe weaken that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I would say the first 24 inches taking it back, feeling like the club is opening up a little bit more. So that, that would be, be another one. Yeah, just trying to feel like Justin Thomas getting that, you yeah. know, toe of the club more up, something like that, as opposed close, to yeah. that. Okay. Um, and then the last thing would be just trying to feel like that face is pointed more to the right at, so I, at impact. So I can even, could I even possibly aim it a little bit right? You, you can aim it right. That will keep the face more open too. Um, but you got to watch and make sure it's not making your path right. too much into out. Yeah, because wherever you're kind of setting up, and that's kind of the old school way. Like when I grew up, and you know, you probably heard this too, was we used to always like, hey, set the face and then angle your body, right? right swing absolutely. along your body. Yeah. And it, it kind of worked. It wasn't exactly accurate, but you have to be careful. Like I see people doing that all the time. They start aiming their body. A lot of them are slicers, right? They're right. like, all right, I'm going to aim left because I hit it right. Well, what you know about ball flight, that actually makes you cut across with the path Absolutely. more and you're in trouble. So yeah. I got to be careful. That, I can't go out there and necessarily just close. Right. That's not always fixing the issue right. or, or making it easier for you. Now, if you're somebody that does slice it, you possibly could close up a little bit and see it. I, I, would, I would tell a slicer to close up. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So those are some things you can think about as you're out there on the course in a, in a practical way of like, hey, I got to control curves. These are some of the things that, hey, we got to get this out right now. You're obviously going to work it, you know, work on it at your practice and all that. But when you're on the course, you got to just come up with your ways that you can manage this you know, if it's going great or if it's not going great, you guys still get it around the golf course. Right. Yeah. So, very yeah. cool. So I'd say in practice, try and hit all these different shots. Try and, you know, if you're if you're a fader, try and hit some hooks and some draws. Mm -hmm. Just feel what your body's doing, feel what that club is doing. And then, you know, know that, that you have that, know what that feel is in case you need it, worst case scenario. But, you know, stick to who you are on the golf course as long as you're controlling that. Right. And curve. don't be afraid to push it. You know, if you're somebody that's 10 out to in, yeah, it's going to feel weird to get it to go, right. you know, one, you know, into out. Right. That's going to feel very, very different. Yeah. So don't be afraid to push it and see what you can do uh, as you go through it. So good. Very cool. So Mike, thanks again so much. It's been fun being here at your studio. Make sure you head over to Mike's Instagram and make sure you check out his website as well. He's got some great stuff over there. So I'll link all that down below. And uh, yeah, thank you again for having us and showing us a little bit of how you use your technology to improve people's games. It's been fun. Yeah, so thanks everybody. Remember, comment down below if you have any questions. Click that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already. And we're gonna see you in future videos. Let us know what you think of these instructor series videos. Excited to hear some feedback and uh, we'll keep doing them. So thanks everybody for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.